This is Thunderbird, the field. These are Thunderbirds, the planes. The sky is bright out here in Arizona. It's bright with fighting planes rolling and slicing through the sky. Thunderbird Field is more than just a field, more than just mere aeroplanes. It's a school. One of the schools operated by the United States Army, by our Army, for training the young pilots of our allies, as well as our own. Here are Chinese boys. They learn to fly well, these Chinese. They have something to fight for. They remember the smoking ruins of their villages back home. They remember the rape of Nanking. And here are British boys. They fly well, too. They fly with a will to win. They, too, remember. They remember the Battle of London, the wanton destruction of life and property. And here are American boys, boys from Kansas and the coast of Maine, boys who never saw a plane close up till yesterday, boys who were soda jerks, law school students, dry goods salesmen, high school athletes. Here they are. Here they come. Watch them fly. Thunderbird Field out here in Arizona is one of many schools of this unique kind. Officers are in charge, but the instructors are civilians. All of them helped to make this picture out here in Arizona at Thunderbird Field. Chinese, British, and American boys work together, study together, play together. They not only learn to fly, they learn to know one another, to be friends. The Chinese learn about us, and we learn about the Chinese, and the British learn about us both. It's hard work at Thunderbird. It's deadly serious work. This is primary training at its most intensive. These boys play, also they work. And they have much work to do. They become more adept at their jobs day by day. And their job is to fight and to play the game to win. Here the Thunderbird sails again, symbol of victory. What's he doing, bobbing for apples? Oh, no, he just soloed. Pretty excited, isn't he? Yeah, that ought to cool him off. <laughs> Where well, I find the CEO's office? You mean Colonel McDonald? That's the one. You go outside, you go this way, you go that way, you go this way, huh? upstairs. Oh, thank you. But he's not there. He's in there. Thanks. Okie doke. Anybody home? Steve Britt. Hello, Mac. You get my letter? What letter? I don't know. Did I write one? Like you old <laughs> son of a gun. I want you to meet Squadron Leader Barrett of the RAF. This is Steve Britt. Barrett? Hey, Britt. Heard a great deal about you. I'm glad to meet you. Thanks. What are you doing out in this neck of the woods? Looking for a job. A job? You? <laughs> sure. You can use another good instructor around here, can't you? Why, of course, but... Okay. Where do I park my toothbrush? Wait a minute. Are you on the level? I was never more serious in my life, Matt. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why should a flyer like you want to bury himself out here in the desert with a war going on? What do you mean, bury myself? This is where the war is going to be won, right here on fields like this. And I want to be a part of it. Of course, if you don't think I've got what it takes. Quiet, Steve. I was just trying to catch my breath. Listen, Mac, I'm not trying to kid myself. I'm no good for combat anymore. They want babies today, kids. I'm not exactly a chicken. That doesn't mean I can't do the next best thing, train those kids. Don't you see what this would mean to a guy who couldn't be up there himself? Every one of those kids I trained would be me. Only there'd be hundreds of them. A Steve Britt Escadri over Germany and Tokyo. I'm telling you, Mac, it's the first decent idea I ever had in my life. You gotta take me. How about your eyes? You're not going blind, are you? 2020. Flying papers in order? Have a look. Oh, 
Okay, Steve. I'll talk to Washington. We'll have confirmation in a couple of hours. Thanks, mate. But remember this. I have no friends here. You do the job my way, or I'll run you out of here so fast you think you're in a tailspin. Sure, Mac. That's the way I want it. I'd be awfully glad to have you with us. Thanks. I only hope I get a crack at some of those RAF boys of yours. They've been doing all right. You will. There's a new class just getting in. Would you like to look them over? Well, I'm sorry, but if you don't mind, I'd kind of like to look up an old pal of mine, Colonel Saunders. Has a ranch around here somewhere. Oh, oh yes, I know the place. The KDS ranch, isn't it? That's it. How do you get there? Straight down the road, about 12 miles. Then you turn to the right, towards the hill. Okay. I'll see you in the morning, boss. What do you make of it? Search me. He's a good flyer, isn't he? Good flyer? He's what the Wright brothers had in mind when they invented the airplane. <laughs> but you know, something tells me this pal of his, Colonel Saunders, uses lipstick. Really? Well, I'll be doggone. Hi, Steve. Excuse me, Gramps. I'll kiss you in a minute. You were marvelous, Steve. Really superb. Hope you brought your brownie with you. I don't need it. I have photographic eyes. Well, you can just take them. Crank up that thing and go right on back where you came from. Okay, give me my coveralls. All right. Take them. <laughs> Well, Gramps, mighty nice to have you living right next door. Next door? Sure. Haven't you heard? I'm over at Thunderbird Field. Oh, no, you're not. I won't have you at Thunderbird. I won't have you anywhere around here. Please don't interrupt, Kay. I'm talking to your grandfather. Yep, I'm a professor now, a reformed character. Gramps, will you leave us alone for a few minutes? Doggone it, just when things are getting hot. It's okay, Gramps, stick around. No, oh, I'll go. Well, just as a favor to you. Darn women is getting so the fellas can't even spit. Unless they say so. You're cute. So are you. Now, wait a minute. You know I was only clowning. It's not that, Steve. It's just that I've stood all I'm going to for you. Wait a minute. Let me finish. I was in love with you. I don't know why, but heaven help me, I was. I can tell you why. Because the minute we look at each other, Roman candles. The Roman candles fizzled. I never tried to kid you. I'm not a bank clerk or a night watchman punching a time clock. You knew that from the beginning. Well? It's no use, Steve. Your kind of life and mine just don't mix. Of course they do. What is all this talk? My kind of life is your kind of life. You can't get away from that any more than I can. Isn't that right? Sorry, Steve. See, the trouble is, I came off the line a woman and not a P-38. 
Gentlemen, I brought you out here to meet Steve Britt, one of your new instructors. I'm sure he's already known to many of you by reputation, not only because of his record of the last war, but for his many flying achievements since then. He believes, as we do, that this war is going to be won in the air. That's why he's chosen to come here to Thunderbird to teach you to do the job. It's a great pleasure and a real privilege to have him with us. And I'm sure that you'll find him an understanding and a sympathetic man with whom to work. Would you like to say a few words, Britt? Thanks. I'll do my talking later. <laughs> I say, old man, that's good. Gentlemen, this is an airplane. The idea is to get it up and keep it up. The most important thing of all is to bring it back. Just one more thing you have to remember. That's your parachute. If anything unusual happens, you grab that ring. Count ten. And pull it. Hard. If it opens, you haven't got a thing to worry about. If it doesn't... Do we get a new one, sir? Nope. From then on, you can fly without them. Well, who wants to see what it's like up there? I do. Okay, hop in. Fasten your safety belt. Good and tight. So if I decide to fly upside down, I won't have to worry about you digging holes in the runway. Come on, lads, off it. Get your morning exercise. Give them the crank. See what happens. Now, your left aileron has come up and your right is depressed. As a result, your left wing is down and you're in a bank. That's enough. Back to center. Now, your ailerons are feathered out, streamlined. Back to level flight. Pull back on your stick. Nose down, all you have to do is push forward. Business gets sick from time to time. That's part of the game. Hang on, we're going down.
like to get out here? I'm all right, sir. Sure, but the exercise will do you good. Sorry I messed it up, sir. Forget it. Your stomach's just a little upset. It's a change of water. You'll feel a lot different tomorrow when we're up there kicking her around. Take a few deep breaths. Thank you, sir. By the way, what's your name? Peter Stackhouse, sir. I knew a Peter Stackhouse in the last war. That must have been my father, sir. Your father was a great flyer. Thank you, sir. Did you know him very well? Well enough to know that if I had to go up against the Luftwaffe today, I'd like to have a man with his guts alongside of me. OK? Yes, sir. And watch yourself. The walk will do him good. Don't start coddling him, see? We haven't got time for that around here. If they don't come through, watch him out and watch him out fast. Sure, General Maytag. You put him in and turn the crank, and I'll ring him out. OK, I'll put him in. Hey, you, Lockwood. Yes, sir? How bad? Oh, me, sir? Yes, you. Cool. Shall we do a Cuban 8 today, sir? What'd your mother wean you on, raw meat? When we could afford it, sir. rather touching. Well, it is rather, isn't it? So you sure you never saw me on the music halls? Used to write all my own words and music. Simply roll out of me. Sounds very charming. Oh, very. You sure you won't come with me to the recreation center? No, not tonight, thank you. Not even for a jumbo malt or one of those gorgeous marshmallow chocolate sundaes with clotted cream and nuts, eh? You aren't feeling queasy in the tummy again, are you? No. Oh. I could let you have a mother sills. No, thank you. Well, as we Americans say, I'll be a senior pal. If you take the colonels, don't turn up in a jolly old aeroplane. Oh, catch is it, sir? Sensational. I thought you'd like it, sir. Yes? Can I come in? Please do, sir. Go ahead, stretch out, take it easy. Just got a minute. I was just lying down. I'm quite all right. Good. I uh, found something among my souvenirs. Thought you might like to have it. Oh, that's my father. There's a date on the back. Pretty faded. April the 8th, 1918. It was just two days before he was shot down. Yeah, we had quite a talk that day. You English don't usually loosen up very much, but I don't know. I was just a kid. Maybe he had a hunch. I remember we got to talking about his place down at, um, at um, Compton on the Y. And about his mother. She must have been quite a gal. She still is, sir. I started to get in touch with her once or twice, but you know how it is. I wish you had. She'd have liked that. We talked a lot about you boys, too. The two of you, aren't there? There were. My brother Tom was shot down over Willemshaven about 10 weeks ago. I'm sorry. Have a smoke. Won't you have one of mine, sir? No, go ahead. Try these. Thank you. By the way, Stackhouse, you're not afraid of flying, are you? I don't think so. I'm not afraid of getting hurt, if that's what you mean. Sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have asked that. I'm glad you did, sir, if you believe me. Sit down. Listen, Pete, this is a big war. 
There's lots of jobs in it beside flying. Take that tank corps. Those guys have really got it. Or those storm crushers in the infantry. Nobody's ever won a war without them yet. Is that right? Yes, sir. There's lots of people who can't fly. That's no reflection on them. The guy just finds he can't get his head and feet all to move at the same time. Lacks that little mystical something called coordination. You know, it takes guts to fly. And it takes guts not to fly. Does this mean you're going to wash me out, sir? Well, you've been up there three times now. The same thing's happened every time. Don't wash me out, sir. I'll get over it. I'm sure I will. Yeah, but there's a war on, you know. Give me a few more days. I'll be all right. I'd like to, Pete. But we've got to think about what's best for your country. They need flyers, and they need them quick. Suppose I'll let you go up there alone, you get killed. I'm asking you to take that chance, sir. I've studied medicine. I know what's wrong with me. It's just a conditional reflex. A what? Uh, subconscious fear of falling. I seem to freeze up. But I can cure myself of it if you only give me time. Do you know that when you came here? Yes, sir. And why'd you come? Afraid it's rather a long story, sir. Go ahead, shoot. I got all night. But it really has to do with my grandmother in England. Your grandmother? Yes, yeah, she's quite a remarkable woman. Still rides every day, even if she is past 70. It all started a little more than 10 weeks ago. Grandmother was just returning from her usual morning ride. A boy from the post office was waiting for her with a telegram. I expect she knew it was in it. She just held out her hand and said, you don't need to tell me. King's service. Oh, milady. I came out without my spectacles. Read it to me, boy. Lady Jane Stackhouse. The Air Ministry regrets to inform you that your grandson, Thomas Stackhouse... Master Thomas! I'll tell it. Go on. ...has been killed in action over Willemshaven. Take Lady Best round to the stables. There's a good boy. Trunk line, please. I want to speak to London, please. George V Military Hospital. First aid casualty station number nine. Peter Stackhouse. Not bad. Not bad at all for an intern. Pretty soon you won't need us old fellows at all. I knew you were on hand, sir, just in case. Oh, yes. I thought of that, too. Telephone, sir. Take the call for me, please. It's a trunk call, sir, from Compton on the wire. Thank you. Will you excuse me, sir? Certainly. Hello? Hello, Grandma. Very well, thank you. And you? Splendid. Did you ride this morning? You did? I envy you. Yes, frightfully busy as usual. What? Oh, Tom. Willemshaven? I'll come down at once. No, don't meet me. I'm not sure what train I can get. Yes. Yes, of course, Grandma. I know he would have wanted it to be that way. I thought you ought to know there'll be 25,000 pounds less for you if ever I decide to die. Which I warn you, I've no intention of doing for well, the world and the state it is now. However, as compensation, I've given you three lumps, ration or no ration. Thank you, Grandma. I've been trying to write a letter to go with it. It's very difficult. And I always did hate writing letters. Didn't Grandpa say it was because you never learned to spell properly? In my day, a woman of a good figure didn't have to spell. 
Dear Mr. Churchill, I've just received news of the death of my grandson, Thomas Stackhouse, in action over Wilhelmshaven. And I want to make an immediate reply in the way I know would have been his and his father's reply, by striking back straight to the mark. I'm asking you, therefore, to purchase for me a suitable aircraft, preferably a bomber, with which to carry on his work. With the deepest regrets that I have no more sons or grandsons to take it into battle, I remain, as always, your devoted servant, Jane Stackhouse. Have you forgotten me? I spoke to the superintendent before I left the hospital. He's agreed that I'll be transferred to the RAF immediately. You better add a postscript. Ask Mr. Churchill to have that bomber available for me as soon as I've learned to fly. I've wanted to fly for a long time. Always, I think. We used to talk about it, Tom and I. As long as he was flying, I didn't mind so much. But, Peter, your work at the hospital, that's important, too. Have you forgotten that? No. Then think of yourself. You know you're not fitted for this sort of thing. Nonsense. I'm perfectly all right. It isn't nonsense. All your life you've been affected by heights. You've had what you call a, a conditional reflex. Don't know where you got it. Not from me, I'm sure. Perhaps it was that fall from your horse when you were seven. That's absurd. I got up and rode again, didn't I? Yes. But you've never quite got over it. That's nothing serious or unusual. I'll make myself get over it. How? By reconditioning myself. By forcing myself to fly by exercising some of the willpower I inherited from you, Grandma. Forgive me, Peter. I'm afraid I behaved very badly. You could never behave badly. <laughs> I remember the day your father told me he was going into the Royal Flying Corps. It was the World War then. He was standing just where you are, Peter, with his pipe in his mouth. Hope you've got a nice pipe. Suddenly, he said something I've never forgotten. It was by an American, I believe, Emerson. For what avail the plow or sail or land or life if freedom fail? You're the last of your line, Peter, the last stack house. All your life, I've looked forward to you and Tom marrying, coming here, filling the house with fine young rascals. I've even thought of myself as here with them, a, a sweet old lady with a white kerchief and a, and a wheelchair. You in a wheelchair? I've been a very silly, selfish old woman. But you'll understand I'm not any longer. I'm a very proud old woman, Peter. Proud and angry. Who suddenly discovered how very stupid life could be without someone buzzing around up there. Come down here. I'll now run along. I'll join you as soon as I've written to Mr. Churchill. So this time I don't care whether I spell it properly or not. You know what I mean. Me one thing. Yes, sir. If you do get sick up there again, watch out down below. Be sure Barrett and McDonald aren't there. Attention, all aviation cadets. All aviation cadets, unless previously notified to the contrary, will be permitted to absent themselves from the base today, Saturday, from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. <laughs> Thank you. 
May I help you? Uh, we'd like some stockings, please. Oh, any particular color? Well, uh, what colors are there? Oh, there's desert sand, honey beige, nude. <laughs> Wait, I'll show them to you. Oh, what size? Uh, 36. 36? Uh, 42 for me. 42? Uh, you see, they're for my grandmother and my mother. She's the solid British type, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, how big is your grandmother? Well, she's... <laughs> Look, Mother. I think about ten and a half. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to look around a bit, too? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. How about those? Uh, a little bit too large. Do you like these? Oh, slightly on the other side. She must have been born on a horse. grandmother. Are you playing some sort of a game? Oh, well, uh, oh no, we, we were just trying to look at your legs. I mean... Did you like them? Oh, I thought they were gorgeous. I really did. <laughs> Thank you. Look here, I say. Yes? I hope you're not angry. That you were interested in my legs? Why, not at all. That's what they're there for. We're really terribly sorry. Don't apologize. I'm flattered. We weren't trying just to look at your legs. No, it, it's uh, his grandmother's legs. <laughs> Oh, his grandmother's legs. You see, it's almost impossible to get them in England. To get what? Legs? <laughs> no, <laughs> stockings. Oh, stockings. Well, to put it very bluntly, we were trying to decide just what size to buy for, for Grandma. None. Now may I go, or are there any other little intimate details you'd like to know? Oh, uh, no, look. Uh, please wait. I know it's very thoughtless of me, but I have an engagement. Couldn't you postpone it and have tea with us instead? No. It would give us time to apologize properly. We've heard so much about the friendliness of the West. And you wouldn't want us to go away with a false impression of American hospitality now, would you? If you were in London, we'd have tea with you. After all, it isn't as if we were total strangers. They give you a special course at Thunderbird in how to pick up American girls. It comes under the heading of initiative. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I can't possibly go to tea with you, Mr. Uh... Oh, oh, Stackhouse. Lockwood. Saunders. But I might take you to tea with me. You might? Oh, I say. If only for the sake of international solidarity. But not, of course, until we've disposed of Grandma's lake. <laughs> well, here we are. Here? Whether you know it or not, you're a couple of angels of mercy for the rest of the afternoon. Hands forward. Rock. Oh. Hands off. Sit back. You see? You repeat the operation 12 and 15 times a minute. And remember, rhythm is the important thing. Now, try again. Forward. Uh. <laughs> no, not so much pressure. Hello, Miss Blake. Hello, Kay. May I present Mr. Stackhouse and Mr. Lockwood? How do you do? How do you do? They're both so interested in our work that they begged me to let them come in and serve as patients. <laughs> How nice. Of course, our lesson for today is almost over, but if any of the girls would like to stay... I'd love to. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, me too. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, me too. Oh, hello. <laughs> all right, go right ahead. It isn't often we get men to practice on. Thank you. <laughs> Shall we all lie on the floor? Oh, no. No, it isn't necessary at all. <laughs> Just take off your coat, roll up your sleeve, and I'm going to try my tourniquet. Cool. Red Cross, you cover a lot of territory, don't it, son? Too much. There, how's that? It's marvelous. May I call you Miss Nightingale? <laughs> it's beautiful, but I'm afraid I'd have bled to death before now. What? My pulse is still beating. Why, it couldn't be. I've been practicing tourniquets all week. Hello, Pete. Seems to be the trouble. Nothing, sir. I'm just going to explain to Miss Saunders about the tourniquet point or pressure point. You know where the artery crosses the bone? Sure, go right ahead. Sounds fascinating. You seem to know everything you need to know about anatomy, Mr. Stackhouse. Well, we doctors always do Doctor? Mm-hmm. My error. 
Hey, Ellie, you boys feel the need of a little first aid? Yes, sir. Well, well, well. Go on in. Come on in. Heaps of pretty girls in here. With just the kind of medicine you need at your age. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, you! You! Come on in here. You've been bleeding to death by yourself long enough. Come on in here, you. See the girls. Get some help. I telephoned I'd pick you up at the ranch this afternoon. Yes, I know. You know? What are you doing here? Why didn't you wait? Perhaps I prefer to be picked up by someone else. Now listen, sweetheart. You can save those subtle little digs for some guy who doesn't know any better. Don't waste them on me. And what's more, if you're worried about somebody's arteries, what's the matter with mine? Nothing, darling. They're lovely, I'm sure. Now, come on. Get up on the table like a good little boy. Do I have to? Yeah. You aren't going to put that on me, are you? <laughs> we'll drive out to Biltmore for a cocktail, have dinner at the Westward Ho, and I'll drive you home. The long way. Sounds lovely, Steve. Just like old times, huh? Hey, how's that? Swell. Now, let's get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't finished yet. Tiny, will you take over for a while? And how does the little patient feel? Fine. Fine. Ready? Ready? Well, you asked me to go to tea, didn't you? Yes, but you said... That... Can't I change my mind? But I gather that you and Mr. Britt, I mean the Mr. Oh, Britt. Oh, no. He's all tied up for the afternoon. Hey! Oh, oh, oh look! He's hurt himself. Our first accident. There, there, now, son, take it easy. We're doing all we can for you. Yeah, come on, get him in. Come on, get him in. What's going on here? Civilian defense. to titles? I never thought about it. Neither have I. By the way, what are you, a duke? Nothing so grand, I'm afraid. Do you know Steve Britt very well? Yes, he's my instructor. He's a great flyer, isn't he? He's a great everything, in my opinion. That was my grandfather who came in with him. Yes, I know. He's awfully rich. How nice. I mean, at the moment. He's always making it and losing it. Never matters to him whether he has a dime or not. Just the fun of making it. Do you think Americans are money grabbers? Some of them may be. I wouldn't say it was purely an American trait. Thanks, Sal. I traveled around the world once. Everywhere I went, I saw churches and schools and hospitals, even in the jungles, all built with American money for somebody else to use. I never saw any German or Japanese philanthropies. 
I could almost kiss you for that. Well, what a stunning idea. Figuratively. The Lord. Oh. Fun. It's been great fun. By the way, do you ride? I was born on a horse. Will you come ride with me? Anytime. Good night. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Hello, is this a new listening post? That's right. Hear anything interesting? Quite a lot. What's it all mean, Kate? It means that I had a lovely time and that I like him. That all? I don't know yet. You wouldn't be trying to make me jealous, would you? Really, Steve, you're marvelous. What an idea. I just wanted to remind you he's a very nice guy. He might think you meant it. And he might be right. Sink your teeth into these hot dogs. Hot dogs? Yes. The great American delicacy. Hope you don't like women who pretend to be delicate eaters. You should see my grandmother eat. Most women are such awful liars about food, especially in front of men. Before they're married. As if a man didn't know women had stomachs. Steve Brett used to swear that I had an alarm clock inside of me, which went off every five hours on the dot. Have you known Steve Britt very long? I met him three years ago. The regular planes for New York were grounded, so I hired him to fly me out here. It was Gramp's birthday. The first thing I knew, he'd sent me right down in the middle of the desert and was threatening to leave me there unless I promised to turn right around and fly back to New York with him. Why should he do a thing like that? He said he was in love with me. Did you go with him? Of course. Were you in love with him? Head over heels. It was wonderful, long as it lasted. Are you still in love with him? You like Steve, and you're wondering whether it's all right for you to be out with me, aren't you? How do you know? Well, Englishmen usually aren't so inquisitive. But all right, I'll tell you. I do like Steve. Tremendously. Sometimes I think I'm in love with him. But I've got enough sense to know he'd make a horrible husband. I'd never stay put. Are you sure you'd like a husband to stay put? I wondered about that myself. The men at the field think he's great. All of them. Yes, I know. That's awfully important to a woman. I mean, to know that other men like him. Then, too, he's just enough older than I am to be very fascinating. I wonder if you realize what an amazing person you are. Should we leave it there for now? I'm hungry. Father gets Kate, she will got a stepson. He's gonna let the grass go under his feet. If I was caught the girl, you better not get up early. I wouldn't let the other fella beat me out. I got here at 11 o'clock. Oh, I made it 10. Hello, Steve. Shh, now we're busy. Okay. Stackhouse, have a nice ride? Yes, sir. It was wonderful. Hope he hasn't caught you cheating again, Gramps. I don't get caught. Dog called every card I'd play. Say, you didn't shuffle these cards. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry we weren't here, Steve. Why didn't you let me know you were coming? That's okay. I was out this way. Thought I'd drop in for a little game with Gramps. And have I been taking him? 64 cents in me. <laughs> <laughs> Not counting this hand. I'll try two. There he goes again. Luckiest man I ever saw in my life. At cards? 
Of course, you'll be staying for dinner, won't you, Steve? Well, I'm sorry. I have some work to do. On Sunday. Go on, Gramps. Give me my dough. I have to go. Now, what's all this Tom foolishness about leaving when Kay gets here? Maybe if you're free some night this week, I'll have that dinner with you. I'd love to, Steve. Some night when you don't have to work. Are you going straight back to the field, sir? Yeah, sure. You mind if I come along with you? You mean you're not staying for dinner? Uh, so my leave ends at 7 p.m. Okay, let's go. Goodbye, Kay. I've had a marvelous time. It was fun, <laughs> wasn't it? Goodbye, Mr. Saunders. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye. Can't make up your mind which one to let bite the apple, can you? You serpent. <laughs> Stackhouse. Come in. Did I wake you, sir? No, I just turned in. Close the door. I had to speak to you. Okay, sit down. Cigarette? Thanks. Stackhouse. I'm in love with Kay. Mm -hmm. What about it? I'm going to ask her to marry me. What are you coming to me for? I'm not her grandfather. No, but I know how you feel about her. Do you? I know you were in love with her. I'm still in love with her. I know if it went for you, I wouldn't still be here. You're afraid I'll wash you out. Is that it? No. How do you know I won't? What would you do in my spot? I don't know. OK, Stackhouse. I told you I'd give you every chance to make the grade as a pilot. Because I figured you had it in you. That still goes. Thank you, sir. Personally, I might hate your guts. But that has nothing to do with flying. As far as you and I and Kay are concerned, that's a different matter. I don't believe you can take her away from you. What do you think of that? If I don't, it won't be for lack of trying, sir. Well, good night, sir. Thank you for letting me talk to you. It's been a pleasure. Oh, Stackhouse? Yes, sir? How many hours duel have you had? Twelve, sir. Well, get your parachute and come along, will you? I'd like to give you a check flight. Now, sir? It's about time you had your solo, don't you think? Oh, yes, sir. Hurry, will you? I'll be waiting. Yes, sir.
feeling so well, huh, Stockhouse? I'm all right, sir. Splendid. That's all. Mr. Britt, sir. Stackhouse just had his check flight, sir. Yeah? I'm afraid he was sick again, sir. That's too bad. I'm sorry to hear it. You don't think he'll be washed out, do you, sir? That's not up to me. Attention all Illuminees. Attention all Illuminees. Report to transportation immediately. On the double. Come on, Charlie. Don't let them get you down, Joe. A bomb it is just as exciting. Sure. Uh, so long, Charlie. Tough break. It's OK. There are plenty of other jobs. Right. Sir, Colonel McDonald would like to see you in his office. Thanks. Colonel MacDonald and I have been going over the records of the British cadre. Nice job. Thanks. Only one man in the whole lot, not up to scratch. Yeah, who's that? Stackhouse. Stackhouse? Yeah, too bad. Looks like we're gonna have to wash him out. Must be a mistake. Stackhouse is gonna make one of the best pilots we have here. If that's the case, why haven't you let him solo? He isn't ready. Well, the other men in his class have. They must have been ready. I know how you feel about those kids of yours, Steve. It's the mother instinct in you. I'm going to recommend the stack house be returned to the medical corps. Okay, you're the boss. But if he goes, I go too. What? Now look back. If I'm the right man for this job, and you got to take my word about my kids. If you don't want to do that, you better get yourself another boy. But he's had 12 hours in the air and still gets sick. I don't know all about that. Some kink in him that's holding him back. Whatever it is, it's up to me to find it and straighten it out. And I will. In the meantime, we're going to hold up the war. You might as well, Barrett, because it's going to take guys like Stackhouse to win it. I know all about that boy, his whole background. His father, his grandmother, and what all this means to him. Things I can't even tell you about because I promised him I wouldn't. Things that spell flyer to me. I don't want to be personal, Steve, but you aren't by any chance being noble about Stackhouse, are you? I wouldn't know about that, Mac. You'll have to figure that out for yourself. The average life of a fighter in the RAF is what? On the other hand, they tell me doctors marry young and live forever. Fourth of July party. I'm going to have me a Fourth of July party out at my ranch next Saturday, and it wouldn't surprise me if a heap of pretty girls found out about it and came a running. <laughs> Whatever in the world is the Fourth of July party? It's the American celebration of their independence from England, Sonny. See? Not really. What cheek! Arizona. My gram says he's as gentle as a dog. He put you up to this. Only as a sporting proposition. Why, you can't do it. Why, you might break your neck. At least I'll go home with a wound strike. I bet this is your bright idea. Well, I always wanted to see an Englishman ride a bucking horse. Hard combination, isn't it, old bean?
Sam. Hi. Will you join me in a little piece of steak? Oh, thanks, Gramps. You don't know if somewhere with that young English squirt? Why don't you go down there and get it? She knows what she's doing. Ah, uh, fondy diddle. The smartest woman that ever lived didn't have sense enough to come in out of the rain since she was at least 30. Now, that's statistics. It's no use, Gramps. She's fallen for him hook, line, and sinker. She say so? No, but I can tell. How? She's been so nice to me today. Now, listen, son, Kay's not a bad girl. Well, maybe she ain't any too good a girl either. But she's everything in the world to me. She's part of my heart. But that don't blind me to the fact that she's a woman and kind of flighty like all the rest. If you had half the gumption I give you credit for, you'd see that. Now, go on down there and do like I said. No use, Gramps. A couple of kids like oh, that. Oh, so that's what's eating you, hey? Now, listen, I was 20 years older than my wife, 22 according to her calculations. Would you think that worried me? No, sorry. What worried me was, was she young enough for me? Now, you love her, don't you? I'm nuts about it. Well, then go on down there and do like I say. I don't want me wishy-washy broken down flyer in my family. Someday, maybe the whole world will be lighted like that again. Of course it will be. Can you imagine London with lights again after all these years of darkness? Children who've been born in Blackheart, seeing the lights of a great city for the first time. Old people who've given up hopes of ever seeing them again, suddenly coming out of their holes in the ground and beginning to live like human beings. It'll be the most wonderful night in the history of the world. That's why I want to learn to fly. I want to help turn those lights on again. Couldn't be just a butcher up there, killing other men for some empty victory. For a piece that was only the first shot of a new war. I want to help make it really mean something this time. To make sure those lights never have to go off again. Not for a single night. Okay. Just now you said, it'll be the most wonderful night in the history of the world. Can't we share it together? I love you, you know that. I happened the very first minute I ever saw you. Will you marry me? I don't know, Peter. You don't love me? I'm not sure yet. You're afraid of hurting Steve? Perhaps. And perhaps it's because I'm afraid of hurting you. If I ever found out I was still in love with him. I've got to be sure of myself, Peter. Because once I've decided, it'll be forever. Oh, wait. It's a horrible thing to say. But when I first met you, I was trying desperately to fall in love with somebody else. I wanted to hurt Steve, make him jealous, get him out of my system all at once. And yet all I've done is hurt you both and confuse myself. I love you, Kay. Steve? I've been looking for you. Shoot. The inspectors are here today, and they've been asking some very embarrassing questions about that class of yours. Yeah? They want to know why your boys are being held back. You know what I told them? What? That the situation would be cleared up immediately. Today, in fact. Look, Steve, I'm not interested in your personal problems. I'm here to run this school and do a job. There's a new class of British boys coming in here very shortly. I want everything cleaned up and out of the way before they get here. Okay, Mike. Personally, I think you're wasting your time as well as ours trying to make a flyer out of Stackhouse. But whether you are or not, you'd better make up your mind right now, today. Otherwise, I'm going to have to make it up for you.
Bronco all over the corral yesterday. You didn't freeze up every time he bucked, did you? Every time he came down stiff-legged, you eased down with him. When he twisted and spun around, you rolled your body right with him. The trouble with you is you've been trying too hard. You've been stiffening up in the saddle. When this ship noses down, don't yank the stick back suddenly. If you tried that yesterday, you'd have pulled that horse over backwards, right? The next time this baby starts to act up or gets nervous, just remember he's got a tender mouth. Don't try to yank him suddenly, unbalance him, give him a chance to recover, straighten him out gradually. He's up, relax. It's okay with me. You can talk to yourself for a while. I'm going for a little stroll. Training ships. I saw him circling around over Camelback Ravine. It looks like he's in trouble to me.
tactics might be all right in a barnstorming circus, but not here. I can't imagine what you were thinking of, bailing out of a ship in a sandstorm. I didn't see any sandstorm when I jumped. I'm not that big a fool. Maybe that boy up there alone, he know he couldn't handle a plane? He made the greatest landing I ever saw. He cracked up, didn't he? He wrecked a ship. The wind turned her over after he set her down. We had a perfect record until you came here. I might have known something like this would happen. Is that another way of saying I'm canned, Mac? I'm sorry, Steve, but I warned you. Colonel MacDonald, he was only trying to give me a chance. I understand that, Stackhouse. And I blame myself. I should have washed you out of here weeks ago. When you're through, report to your squadron leader, Barrett. He'll have your transfer papers ready. Tough luck, Pete. It's all right, sir. At least I know I can fly, thanks to you. You shouldn't have done it for me. What gives you the idea I did it for you? Your father was a friend of mine, wasn't he? Besides, they say there's a great future in parachute jumping. Guy can't stick to the same job all his life. I might want to better myself. Oh. I just love about you, English. Your sense of fair play. No matter what a man does, you always give him another chance, don't you? Yes. That is, uh, if he deserves it. You see that man over there, the one with the white hair? Yes. A few years ago, he stole an awful lot of money from a bank. Huh? Literally ruined hundreds of people. Then he got to thinking about it and came back and said he wanted to make whatever restitution he could. Hmm. And uh, did he? Uh-huh. He was so sincere, a lot of people, even those who should have hated him most, decided to give him another chance. Huh. And now he's one of the finest and most respected men in the state. Splendid. I told Kern McDonald I knew you'd feel that way about it. Oh, naturally. Anyone can make a mistake. Then you will do it, won't you? Do what? Give Peter Stackhouse another chance. Stackhouse? Colonel McDonald's wanted to do it all along, but since Peter's in the RAF, he felt it was up to Colonel you McDonald and... Colonel McDonald hasn't even mentioned it. Well, it's rather a personal favor, you know. He's such an old friend of Steve Britt's, and he knows how badly Steve feels about it. But now that you're willing, I can't wait to tell him. Mildred, may I cut in? Of course, Kay. I just love Mr. Barrett. Seems to me you love a lot of people around here. He has such a wonderful sense of fair play. Only, of course, he feels it's your job and he hates to bring it up. Bring what up? You see that man over there, the one with the white hair? Yes? I was telling him about a horrible mistake that man made a few years ago. Really? What did he do? Left his wife and three babies for another woman. But then he got to thinking about it and came back and pleaded so hard for a second chance that his wife took him back. And now he's one of the finest and most respected men in the state. Well, isn't that wonderful? I told Mr. Barrett I knew you'd feel that way about it. Just a moment. What are you trying to say? That Mr. Barrett would love to give Peter Stackhouse another chance, but of course you're head of the school and he doesn't like to interfere. <laughs> but you don't mind interfering. Well, I'm an American, and I'd hate to think that we aren't as fair-minded as the British. <laughs> yes. Well, I suppose if Barrett feels as strongly about it as you say. Then you will? If you promise to be out the field tomorrow morning to see that I don't forget. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I hope you didn't mind my cutting in like that. The pleasure was all mine. Tom, <laughs> I want you to meet a great admirer of yours. Miss Saunders, Mr. McDonald, my brother. How Your do you brother? do? Your brother? How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Look, isn't he marvelous? What I tell you, not even a flutter. They didn't believe you when you said he could fly. I knew he could. You really go for that guy, don't you? 
I'm in love with him, Steve. I'm going to marry him. Sure, I could have told you that weeks ago. You knew, and yet you made a flyer out of him in spite of it? I made a flyer out of my eye. He had it in him all the time. All I did was iron a few of the kinks up. Okay, Steve. But thanks just the same. <sighs> What are you going to do, Steve? Oh, I'll find a spot somewhere. But they don't really want you to go. They couldn't after you proved you're right. Uh, Max has been doing a lot of talking. I don't know. Ferry command looks kind of hot to me. I always did like to travel. Don't be a fool, Steve. You can't leave here now. Why shouldn't I? Look what you've done for Peter and the other boys. And this is only the beginning. Why, there'll be hundreds of others just like them. With kinks to be ironed out. You said yourself that this wall be won on fields like this, by boys like these. But they can't win it unless they know their jobs. And how are they going to learn unless men like you stay here and teach them? Besides, now that you won't have a little dame like me on your mind, Hey, who did that? It's a frame-up. Ambulance! Thunderbird pilots, no longer novices, no longer boys being trained, no longer fledglings. They're out of the cradle now, they're experts, they're veterans. Thunderbird Field has done its job, now the boys do theirs. Watch them fly, these young pilots who send their messages in the form of bombs. These young Englishmen are going to bomb Berlin just as they bombed Essen, Cologne, and Dusseldorf. These young Chinese will harry the Japanese invaders from the Yangtze to the Yellow River. They have a score to settle with Tokyo. They'll settle it. Watch them. And these young American Thunderbirds have some bombs and bullets up their sleeves, too. These are the young men who are fighting for the rights of free people everywhere. These are the pilots. These are the Thunderbirds. They know their job. They'll do it. But they might never have become pilots if the men on the ground hadn't served them so well. Let us pay homage to the instructors, too. To the Steve Brits everywhere, who teach men how to fly and fight and win. Hey, boy. My name's Britt. What's your name? Atkinson, sir. Atkinson, huh? You are the Freckles. What's your name? Percival Archibald Gouverneur Smyser. Okay, Red. Mm -hmm. 